Arlene Wittig. I'm the Executive Director of Options Health. At Options Health, we believe that all lives have value and have been equally created in the image of God. That life holds meaning and we are called to respect and honor life at every stage. This means that not only do the lives of unborn babies hold value, but also the lives of women, men, children, and entire families. Statistics show that 50% of pregnancies are unplanned. And for over 35 years, Options Health has been a safe place for a woman in an unplanned pregnancy to come and to be listened to, to be cared for free of judgment. We encourage her to bring her spouse, partner, or boyfriend so that we can serve them together because pregnancy affects them both. Our goal is to help them understand that they have more than one option and a community of support that goes beyond the pregnancy test, that we're here for them before, during, and after their pregnancy. Through our free and services and programs, we offer them hope. We remind them that they're stronger than they think and that they are not alone. We share a perspective that they may never receive anywhere else by providing light during a very dark time. We're here for them, and our heart is to be here for generations to come. We count on our amazing donors and church partners to help us keep all of our services free so that we're able to focus on what truly matters, the person that's sitting in front of us. Through our Walk for Life, you have an opportunity to support our mission to serve and to care for those in unplanned pregnancies, to empower and to educate teens to make healthy sexual choices and walk alongside women that have had a past abortion. Join us in the mission of Options Health by registering and participating for our 2021 Virtual Walk for Life. Good morning, Sanctuary Church Online. I am so excited that you're here and watching with us. My name is Teddy, and I want to welcome every person who's watching us for the very first time online. Welcome to Sanctuary Church Online. We love that you're here. I want to ask, would you do me a favor? Would you write new to Sanctuary in the comments below? And one of our team members would love to reach out to you with a Connect card, just to get to know you better. We're about two things here at Sanctuary, is to know God and know Him better. We do that through praise and worship and hearing the message that God has given one of our um, pastors through the Word of God. I want to take a pause and say thank you to every person and Sanctuary family who's been sharing the service, loving the service, and liking the service on YouTube, on Facebook and Instagram because of you because of you share the service many people have heard the hope and love of our Lord Jesus Christ would you do that again today would you share the service love the service like the service on Instagram Facebook YouTube with your friends 
and your family. There's many who need to hear the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope of his salvation. I would also want to make an announcement. We're having our in-person service today at 1 p.m. at Baldwin Park, weather permitting. It's by the playground where we have our Kingdom Kids activities. So I want to welcome you out again to Baldwin Park at 1 p.m. So bring your friends, your family. We love to see you. We're going to have fellowship. Um, and we're going to hear a message, worship together. All right, we're going to get into worship. I'm going to pray for us. So go ahead and move, remove all distractions. Lord, I just thank you that you are moving today. Holy Spirit, break out today with your love, Jesus. Father, I just pray that your love will overwhelm us, saturate us, our hearts and our minds. We open our hearts to you, Jesus Christ, to hear what you have to say. We want to know you better. We worship you, Jesus. And all of his people said, Amen. that's not right. It's walking on your heels that is the best tip for walking. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure, sister, it's on your toes. Actually, I, I've been in the profession, profession longer than you have. It's actually heels. It's on your toes. It's actually your heels. It's, 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 it's a pain. That's how it works. But I saw that she answered me. No. I can hide Unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance of my enemies. Too long, my fears are gone. I'm no longer slave. i 
So I'm holding on to the love that has laid hold of me. I'm holding on to the love that has laid hold of me. I'm holding on to the love that has laid hold of me. I'm holding on to your love. Even when I cannot see. Even when I cannot feel it, even when I feel alone, I'll keep loving you, God. Even when I cannot see, even when I cannot feel you, even when I feel alone, I'll keep loving you, God. Even when I cannot see, even when I cannot feel you, even when I feel alone, I'll keep loving you, God. Even when I cannot see, even when I cannot feel, even when I feel alone. Never alone, oh no, no. I'm holding on to the Hi, everybody. Welcome to this uh, great Sunday. Uh, the weather looks good. Looks like we're going to be able to do the park at 1 o'clock today, Baldwin Park. So hopefully you're going to be a part of that. So excited about being able to bring this message today. It's, uh, it's one of those times that is, um, how do I say this? I'm excited, but I, I have some trepidation, both for me personally and for us as a community, because what I'm going to be uncovering is uh, is one of those things that we just need Jesus to help us in it. And uh, there there is no like human cure for what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about a moment uh, that becomes a, a movement, a moment that becomes a movement, and we're going to go back into the into the upper upper room, kind of after uh, Pastor Audrey talked about uh, last week, the road to Emmaus, and how important it was for us to be able to see and sense Jesus, not visually, but in our heart, in our in our spirit. So, such an important message. If you didn't hear that, please go back uh, wherever you're watching this now and listen to it because it's just incredibly important. So what we're emphasizing is, is uh, Jesus lives on, on the earth for 33 and a half years, ministers for three, three and a half, uh, is son of God, son of man, uh, care, and then does two incredibly important things, like 
the most important things that have ever happened since the beginning. Uh, he carries our sin, the weightiness of all of our sin, past, present, future. He carries that to his death upon the cross. Had to happen. It was, it's the only way. We can't fix ourselves. So that's, that's one of the most important, well, the most important movement in the history of mankind because it, it opens up us to have eternal relationship with God and with one another. And then the second uh, phase happened uh, on the day of Pentecost out after the upper room experience. And that is that the promise of the Holy Spirit was delivered to humanity and it changed everything. It, it really did change things from a moment and we're going to talk about that, into a movement that, uh, that goes on. And hopefully we can even enhance that movement with, with what we're talking about. So, but let me start with a couple of, uh, couple of thoughts about moments and movements. And it starts with, um, think about for a second, when you were growing up, um, what did you want to be, when you were a little guy, you, were, you thought about things. You know, for me, it, it was a cowboy. I, t I checked with my brother-in-law. He said that was one of the things he wanted to, too, until he saw so many movies, and it was just dust and mud and that kind of thing. So that kind of took the, uh, the shine away. Um, my, my wife, uh, Lynn, said that she wanted to be an airline stewardess. I guess they're flight attendants now, but airline stewardess back, back then, which is interesting because she doesn't even like flying, so I'm not sure why that's what she wanted, uh, wanted to be. Um, so right now, what's coming to your mind? Put it in the chat. And tell, uh, let me know what, what it was that you saw, what you wanted to become, what story wanted to be written through through your life. My uh, youngest daughter told me this morning that she wanted to be a nurse and that that, that was her desire growing up until I think she got her first memorable uh, shot and realized she was, didn't like needles. So, so that faded, faded away. I'm, I'll probably come back to that uh, later because she is a nurse today. Um, but those kind of dreams are kind of like moments. But unless, unless I become a cowboy, it's not really a movement. It's just, it's just a moment in time. I have this uh, illustration. I'm, I'm a, a basketball fan, a warrior fan to be, be exact. Both my wife and I are. And so I want to uh, give an illustration between uh, moments and um, and movements. Uh, there's a picture of this guy, a really famous guy, LeBron, LeBron James. He's had a lot of pretty amazing moments. He's um, a tremendous basketball player. Um, but the, the interesting thing is he has won championships for three different teams. He won a championship in Miami. He won a championship in in Cleveland, his hometown actually, and he won a championship in Los, Los Angeles. The interesting thing is when you think of Le LeBron James, you don't think of his team. He's just had lots of really great moments in his life, but they've been singular. Definitely wouldn't be viewed as a movement. So here's the, the next picture is this. And it would be hard, you'd be hard pressed to pick out who is the star player in this. This is a picture of, of the Warriors actually when they beat one of Le, LeBron James's teams in, in Cleveland. You guys go, well, who's the, who's the leader there? You know, obviously those of you that are Warrior fans, go Warriors. Thumbs up if you're a Warriors fan. Um, th there is... Uh, Steph Curry, Stephen Curry is you know, probably the noted <laughs> leader. His moment came um, when he was drafted by the Warriors. And 
and and here were some of the markings of of what now is the warrior movement. And see if you if you if you don't follow basketball, you'll just have to kind of take my word for it. But um, a movement requires selfless leaders, and on the warriors, you know, there's two or three guys that are leaders, and you'll you'll see them. They're absolutely selfless. When they're out of the game, they're cheering on the others like there's no tomorrow. And if someone makes a great play, they're just going crazy uh, for each other. The, the Warriors began this movement with real clarity of purpose, that they were not going to be about one person. They were going to be about winning championships. And they also had clarity of the importance of every single individual. It's like everyone knew their role. And if they were uh, like sitting on, uh, sitting on the bench waiting for their time, it was like they were still really an important part of that. And, and the whole team moved as one. And so that's why, even though the, the Warriors have had a really bad season last season, and uh, you know, they're like at 500, <laughs> winning as many as they're losing this year, there's still a sense of them being a movement. And I, I think that movements are based upon moments that you have. You know, the, the warriors could not have the movement they're having now had those people like Stephen Curry not had the moment where they were drafted. And, and I think that's true for, for everybody. I know in my daughter who became a nurse, she had a moment of clarity that said, I'm, I'm going to become a nurse, and now she's part of the, the movement. There's been really great movements through history. Interestingly, not as many as you would, <laughs> you would think. Uh, for, the, for the world, um, and, and, and especially in the United States, there has been a movement of the abolition of, of slavery. It started centuries ago, moved to a place where you know, the actual civil war happened because of this movement. There were specific people that were leaders. People gave their life for it uh, so that there would be a movement towards equality for all races. There was a movement for women's, what they call women's suffrage, which is the women's right to vote and, the, and women being raised up to being equal to, uh, to men because that was not the case even in Jesus' Jesus's time. And Martin Luther King you know, creating a civil rights movement for all people that, that everyone would have this equality of, of uh, purpose, um, being able to go after their, their dreams. Really interesting thing that I, as I was uh, praying about studying through this, it's interesting that Jesus began all three of those great <laughs> movements uh, thousands of years ago. You know, he s removed the stigma of slavery, um, s began to call all people equal. He said there was no male or female. He embraced uh, the, the leadership capability and power of, of, uh, of women. Uh, amazing, amazing, amazing that each one of those things that we now are m more towards the compassionate end of it, the, the right end, end of, of treatment of, of one another, uh, those all started with Jesus walking, walking the earth. Movements have these kind of things. The leaders, the great leaders, Jesus being the leader of this movement, and followers embrace that purpose together. What's the purpose of the church? Uh, loving God, learning to love God, and loving, loving one another. And then Jesus puts the, the, the purpose upon the earth to go make disciples, to go and preach the good, good news. And, and everyone that is going to move in this movement has to have a moment 
with Jesus that makes it worth it. You know, if you find people that are on the edges of movements uh, that haven't had a meaningful moment that don't, you know, like Martin Luther King, he, you know, virtually, he really gave his life for, for it because he knew something about a moment that, that happened between him and God. If you don't have that, that moment, you're just kind of um, moving along with the group and you will not stand the test of time. Do you know, at, at this point in, in our history, in the nation's history, there was a study done that for the uh, first time, there's only 43% of people in America that even say, well, this doesn't mean that they are, say that they are Protestant Christians. That's always been over 50%, and you know, we were founded, so nearly... 100% of the people that were coming over were, would call them that. Now it's under 43%. So I want to go back to the beginning for, for a minute of, of this movement. So think, think about this. Jesus has risen from the dead. He has walked with, with people um, before his ascension to heaven for, for about 40 days. He's shown miracles. There's been amazing things that have happened. And, uh, but the, the thousands of people that were following him have, have disappeared and dissipated so that there now are 120 that are following his instructions to go to Jerusalem and wait together. So that's, they all had that, those people of the 120 all had moments with Jesus. And they were in the room together and something pretty amazing happened the Holy Spirit the Comforter came upon them and it changes everything so uh, here's a picture of the beginning day one the people that had moments there was 120 day two it says in Acts 42 uh, in Acts chapter 2 they added another three at least 3,000 so day two of the moment began a movement there were 3,120 people. So, so remember that. That's about one-tenth of one percent of the human population of the world. So let me read a couple of things about this movement that were, that were going, going on, and then I'm going to show you what happened with it. Acts 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone was filled with awe and had many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They broke bread together in their homes and they ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number movement, <laughs> added to their number those that were being saved. Acts 5.13, Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets and laid them on their beds, mats, um, so that Peter's shadow could fall on them, and all of them were healed. Acts 6.7, So the word of God spread, movement, and the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and the number of priests began to be obedient to the faith. Okay, so, so that's all going on, and more and more people are having moments. Miracles are happening. happening. They're responding to, to teaching, to, to the, the getting together in homes, to the breaking of bread together, that people are responding, and there is an amazing movement that is going on. And this is what happens. Within 250 years, there are 34 million Christians. And this picture shows where all the churches, really of the known population centers, uh, had spread from one in Jerusalem to all of these 250 years. Almost, uh, I think it's almost 60% of the population. That, in fact, is a movement. So let's, let's see what happened uh, to, to create that movement because something 
has happened to, to at least dwarf it, and at least dwarf it in, in the United States and or dwarf it here in this, in this valley, because those particular things that were intrinsic to the, to the movement, you know, I would say most of us don't see. You know, most of the interaction, obviously because most people weren't Christians, the miracles were happening to those that had not yet believed. And something happened to cause them to believe. And that's what I want us to see. If there's a way to open that door a little bit more than what it is right now. So in, of the 120, here's what I believe they had to, had to embrace. They had to be willing to leave their life as they had known it. Thousands had the moments. Thousands, you know, they were, were fed uh, by Jesus, were healed by Jesus, watched miracles, watched Lazarus come out of the grave, stories of him, and they all, thousands had moments. But only 120 began the movement. And what would be the difference between those people? And here's a, here's a great question to ask ourselves. Would you have been in the upper room? Would your moment, the moments you had with Jesus, would they compel you to get into that upper room and, and wait for 10 days in that upper room? That's a great question. And I've been asking my, myself that, and I'm still trying to sort out the answer. But here's the makeup from what history says about that upper room, and I think it's just such an interesting makeup because it talks about where the moments were for those people. Uh, the, the 11 disciples were there and a few others. They, they believed that the, that the 70 that walked with him most closely, these were probably the ones out of Luke where he uh, anoints them to, to go two by two into the world and amazing things happen and, and those moments were upon them. There was a, a large contingency of women, which again, that would never have happened in Jesus's time in any other way except moments where women felt included. He was so inclusive about, about them. Um, there were tax collectors. Zacchaeus was probably there and noted there in some of the writings that he was the tax collector that was the, the little guy that had to climb a, a tree and, and Jesus looks at him and says, I'm going to go to your house today. And, and he immediately uh, gives up his wealth. He, he pays everybody back that he cheated. And it's, it's just an amazing story. And Jesus says, today, salvation has come to your, to your door. It's likely that Nicodemus, the one that had questions about could he be born again, and the moment with, with Jesus might have been in that room. Each one of them went through moments to, to get into the upper room because then something happened that transformed the moment into the movement. For Peter, um, it was breakfast on a beach. Jesus had uh, come to the beach. Peter was, had gone fishing. He, re, he saw that it was Jesus. He, he jumps into the water, swims to the thing, and in that moment, he has a moment with Jesus that changes Peter forever, causes Peter to be in the upper room, to be an instigator of the movement. Um, the Samaritan woman might have been there. Uh, certainly women were there. The Samaritan woman was the one that Jesus was at the well saying, talking about the living water. And that was her moment. And she became part of the movement. Uh, as I said, Zacchaeus was, <laughs> was probably there because of the moment that Jesus put him in. Mary Magdalene was there because she had been forgiven of, of all of her sins. So here's the question that I'd love for you to consider this. What's your moment or moments? What are the significant moments of your encounters with Jesus? You know, mine was, um, I've had many. I, 
I've watched my daughter, uh, my middle child, be healed of multiple sclerosis. I've watched the, the dynamics of Jesus moving within community to, to accomplish that amazing miracle. Uh, personally, I've received peace into my, into my life. It was a, a request of my salvation. Show me um, who you are. And he did. He gave me this sense of eternal peace. It's a moment that I can't deny ever. Uh, we just, um, Pastor Don Fotenhauer, who is um, uh, the, the dad of one of our elders, just went, went home to be with, the, be with the Lord. Amazing moment in his life. He was baptized in the Holy Spirit, began to speak in tongues, in a, and he was a leader of, of a church um, community that did not believe in that. And it, and it really cost him everything uh, to follow, follow Jesus. But he did it with, um, with the power of the Holy Spirit and his personal conviction, and a whole movement began because of that. But what's your, what's your moment? Because the next question is, now grab onto your seats, because this is such an important question. Is your moment enough to follow him no matter what it costs? I'm going to say that again, because if we're, if we're going to be a moment and be a movement, then our, then our moment has to carry us past lots of things. Is your moment, whatever encounters you would include in your moments, are they enough to follow him? no matter what it costs. Because Jesus says it's going to cost you uh, your very life. If your life's important, you can't follow it. You can't be his disciple, he says. Is who Jesus is and what he has done for you enough? Is who Jesus is and what he's done for you enough? Now, you know, if we were all together in church, everyone would go, going, yeah, he's enough, he's enough. But really, it's a very serious question. And, and I want us to take it seriously. Because if it's not enough, we have, to, we have to find a way to see him better. Because he certainly is enough. Uh, and we just may not have enough of a, a moment in order to convince us. Enough to give up everything. So here are the three things that I see in the upper room people that um, they had to, had to give up. And they couldn't in their own humanness. So that's, we're going to get help with this. Um, there was fear of people. Yeah. They had to give up their fear of people. You know, I'm reminded of Peter. The, <laughs> Just the day before Christ's crucifixion, he, he denied Christ three times in front of people that had no power to hurt him. But because he was so afraid, he denied, denied Christ. Uh, Pilate gave Christ to, into crucifixion even though he didn't believe that he deserved it because of his fear of people. John 12.42 says, yet... Yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than praise from God. You know, we tend to um, stay in... <laughs> in these safe little bubbles, it's an interesting phrase in the middle of a pandemic, <laughs> when um, God's calling us to go make disciples of the whole world, to go out and preach the good news. But our fear of people, and I, you know, if that's you, um, and it's me, I have, a, I have a bit of fear of people. I'm, I feel like Holy Spirit's helping me get over that more, but if that's you, just put, that's me in the chat. And you know, just let's, let's try to be honest because we're going to pray and see what 
Holy Spirit might do in a moment. So one, uh, they got rid of their fear of people, as, as evidenced by Peter coming out, standing with the 11, and speaking in front of all of Jerusalem right after uh, the upper room experience as the movement began. Um, and you can't have excess, excess baggage. We all look for comfort in our sin and in our stuff. There's a, a number of uh, uh, Hebrews 12.1 says that we have to throw off every encumbrance, every sin that entangles us. We have to throw it off because we find comfort so that we, we're kind of stuck in our moments and we cannot be a part of the movement. And there's an awful lot of comforts around that turn into, turn into sin. It's a, it entangles us. It can be uh, as simple as um, a bag of potato chips <laughs> as, uh, that brings, you know, brings you comfort. Jesus is your comforter. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. And if we're finding our comfort, I mean, other things are fine as long as they are not the source of your comfort. That's, a, that's so important. If, if we're finding comfort in other things, we need to ask Holy Spirit to change that so that we can, we can, there's lots of things we can do. I can eat potato chips, but I, I shouldn't eat potato chips to cover up something else because then it becomes sin. The, the same with uh, social media, um, TV series, you know, everything. If it's bringing you comfort, that's Jesus's honored role in our life. Um, and stuff. There's so many stories about, remember the rich young ruler in Luke 18, uh, 18, it talks about this rich young ruler comes and says, how do I, um, how do I be perfect? How do I in inherit eternal life? And Jesus tells him a couple of things. He says, well, I've done that uh, my whole life. And he says, well, you lack one thing. Sell everything you have, give that to the poor, and come follow me. Give up your life and join the movement. And he didn't have a big enough moment with Jesus to be able to, to, be able to do it. So, uh, again, there's, it's so important that our moments give us enough um, desire, enough knowledge of Jesus that we'll follow him anywhere, no matter what the cost we will go after him. If you have the moment individually, then maybe we can become his movement in our region and our valley. So let me ask you, what's your moment? Is your moment enough to follow him? Is who he is and what he's done for you, enough. Enough to give up your fear of people. Enough to give up all of your baggage. Enough to give up all of your excuses. You know, when you think of excuses, it's like, I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not smart enough. Um, people won't accept me. Um, all, all of those things are just excuses, which many of the people in the upper room could have had. Like all of the women, they could have said, no one even counts us. How, how can we be part of a movement? And yet Jesus counts you, and you are part of the movement. If we have the moment, we can be his movement, because here's what we have. We have selfless leaders. We have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And they're selfless. They honor one another rather than you know, putting themselves up. They actually say this in Matthew 20, 28. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. What great leaders. And leaders within our community have to be that way too. We have to be servant leaders. All of us need to realize that we have a role to play, and part of that is in serving. 
We have, to, we have clarity of purpose. No movement in the history of the world has had such clarity. Here it is. Go preach the good news. What could be clearer than that? Go make disciples of all nations. Start where you are and then go out. Isn't that, I mean, that's pretty clear. Interestingly, that's almost a lost perception for the local community. I want us to let it rise up and be something amazing. And we have to move as one. 1 Corinthians 1.10 says, Paul, appeal, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, everybody, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this is for him, Jesus saying, that you all agree with one another and in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought, and I would say in clarity of, of purpose. And then, number four, uh, everyone has a role to play. Just like the warriors, everyone has a, a role to play. 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 talks about the, the diversity of the Spirit's gifting and, and all of these different gifts and then how God places them in the body that he's the head of and they're all moving as one the way they should. It's Ephesians 4 says that we, there's all these gifts that work to bring unity into the church, into the movement. Is your movement enough? If yes, then the impossible might be possible. Uh, G.K. Chesterton, who is a, a theologian and philosopher uh, in the mid-1800s, uh, I'm trying to re remember this. I should have written it down. But he said that, that Christianity is difficult, so it, be, it stays untried. That people don't give up on Christianity because they've tried and failed. They give up on it because they, it's hard and they don't try. So I want us to try. And the upper room experience that began the movement is the experience that I want us to, to begin to rise up again with. Because the Holy Spirit took care of all three of the things that I've made note of. The Holy Spirit coming means that I can be free from the fear of people. The Holy Spirit coming into my life means that I can be free from the baggage that entangles me, sin and stuff. The Holy Spirit coming means that I can be free from the feeling of insignificance and unimportance. And if we all do this, the Holy Spirit will turn our in individual moments into a Holy Spirit movement. So let me pray with you. If you've had a moment or moments with Christ, and he is the one that you want to follow with complete abandon. You're going to need Holy Spirit to do it because fear of people will try to creep up. Uh, lugging around baggage that makes us comfortable, our, our sin and this stuff will, will keep, keep it. it has to be gone, and we can't just set it aside. Holy Spirit has to give us the power to set it aside. Um, we can't fight the feeling of insignificance or unimportance by ourselves, but Holy Spirit can. So if you want to be part of the movement and take your moment, if you've had an, this, these moments with Christ that are significant enough, this prayer is for you. Close your eyes, put your hands out in front of you. Lord, for everyone that fears people, I include myself in this. I pray that the power that came upon Peter would come upon us, that we would have a Holy Spirit experience that would rise us up out of fear, that your love of us would empower us to move with you with such boldness, Holy Spirit boldness, under the control and the meekness of the Holy Spirit into a world that desperately needs 
your voice through us. I pray, Lord, for all of us that are living a life so much less because we're carrying around sinful comforts and, and, and things of this life are just too important. Our money's too important. Our homes are too important. Even our, our very families get in the way of the moments you've created and you created our family for us. So I just pray, Holy Spirit, for all of us that are encumbered, entangled, that you will untangle the encumbrances. Lord, I pray for everyone that's involved in sin of comfort, that you, by the power of your might, will just free them from that. They'll see it. They'll confess it. They'll repent of it. They'll turn from it. And it will change. Whether they've done it a thousand times before, do it again. I'm asking them to have the power to do it again by the unction of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, for every person that comes from a group of people that has always felt ins insignificant. I pray over women today that have um, felt insignificant in their roles, that they have, a, they have a full, equal role in the movement. I pray for different ethnicities that have been uh, felt less than you have chosen them I ask you to by the power of the Holy Spirit to free them as you did in the upper room and they became something 2,000 years ago when the Holy Spirit came upon it let all of these that have ever felt insignificant or unimportant be delivered from that by the power of, of the Holy Spirit I pray Lord that you will make these people that have embraced your moments become the movement of preaching the gospel, preaching the good news, of making disciples of all, all people. Now, listen to me real quick as I finish up here. If you have prayed that prayer and you've been, your moments are significant, if you have not gone to growth track, I don't care where you live, growth track is on Zoom, this is the first Sunday of the month. This is the best time to start. Pastor Audrey and myself will be on Zoom. We want to welcome you to start Growth Track, where you can become, uh, understand your purpose within the great purpose of God. We'll help one another do that. I'm encouraging you, no matter where you are, because of the technology, we can do this together. Secondly, if you are not part of a small group, and, and you want to be part of the movement, get in a small group. Go to our uh, webpage, sanctuaryconquered.org. Go to our webpage and get into a small group. You just got to, got to do it. Will you do that? If you live in the area, get to the park, 1 p.m., Baldwin Park, right now. We're getting ready to do uh, in-building services, but don't wait. They didn't wait. In the, in the upper room, the movement didn't wait. So I'm just asking you, what will you do different now so that the Holy Spirit, the seed of the, the Holy Spirit's working in you can, can flourish? And now to everybody else that needs a moment, you cannot do this unless, unless something has happened between you and Jesus that is so monumental that it's the, the one thing. <laughs> The one thing, your relationship with Jesus is the one thing that will carry you th through everything else. And you will get to change the world with him and with us. It will be compelling. It will be a bigger story. Bigger story than the Warriors. Definitely bigger than LeBron James. But you need to have a moment. And if you haven't had the moment that causes you to do that, we're gonna, I'm going to pray for you that you, that you will. If you find yourself without a moment and you're fearful, you're fearful of people, probably are if you, if you haven't asked Jesus into your heart to take care of the fear. If you're entangled with all kinds of comfort, comfort comfortable sin, uh, or stuff is so important to you that all you think of is you're worrying about tomorrow and you know, are you gonna make it? worrying about your health, worrying about all of, all of that. Those aren't unimportant worries, but they are not the one thing. And so 
if you need a moment for him to come and just prove himself to you, show himself to you, uh, then if, if you feel insignificant, you know, young people, if you feel like you're insignificant, that you don't have a call into this movement, you're wrong. Jesus has called you, and you're significant, and you are important. Um, each one that's hearing my voice, you have no idea how important you are to the movement of God here upon the earth. And, but you've got to have a moment with him that carries you into the movement. So if that's you, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think about, are you fearful? If you say yes, um, then ask God. Say, Jesus, I don't want to be fearful anymore. I repent of my fear and ask you to take it away. If you are full of doing things that you know are just making you comfortable but not making you righteous, just turn. Just say, I'm Jesus, I want you to free me from my sin. Free me from all of my anxiety for about things. Give me peace. I repent of everything I'm doing to find my own way out of fear and out of sin and out of my anxiety of stuff. If, if you feel insignificant, Lord, I pray you'd give a moment where you will speak to them of their significance, that you created them. You saw them before they were. You placed them here and now. I ask you just to do an amazing thing in their life and in their heart. Now ask him to do that. Ask him to give you that moment. Ask him to do, give you that moment that will be so significant that it will prove who he is and what he's done for you so that you're willing to follow him with everything, that he will be your one thing. I hope this is, this is helpful. It's been helpful to me. I want to just encourage you with this one quick thing. You can't do this alone. Um, you can't think your way through this. You can't make it happen. You can't turn over a new leaf. You can only ask Jesus to bring you the Holy Spirit, to deliver you, to get rid of your fear, get rid of your sin, get rid of your feeling of insignificance. You can't do it by creating a new, new level of uh, performance. It isn't about performance. It's about walking with him and then walking with us. So I pray that you will do that. I hope it's been uh, helpful. I hope to see you soon. God bless you all. Here's Pastor Audrey. Thank you so much, Pastor Jim, for that beautiful message. Hey, uh, Sanctuary and anyone joining in on the service right now, I just want to ask for you to go ahead and put into the comments right now what it is about Pastor Jim's message that blessed you today or anything about the service, really. Uh, I just love to see the interaction and the response to the Word of God because every time we gather, when we come together as a church, what we are hoping for and praying for and anticipating is that His presence is going to be with us. And in His presence, we are being transformed and changed and always for the better. And so just go ahead and share with one another in the comments what he's doing in your life right now. And hopefully that'll inspire um, one another and just kind of solidify that testimony of what he's doing in your heart. And, uh, you know, because when we hear the word, we don't want to just hear the word and then move on with our day. We want to do something about what we heard. And so I want to encourage you to take a moment today and ask the Holy Spirit to show you what it is that he wants you to do uh, with what he has spoken to you through his word today and take that step of faith. And, you know, for anyone who might be listening in and you're thinking, you know, I do not have a relationship with this Jesus Christ that you guys are sharing about, but I really would like to start a relationship with him today. And um, I want to make sure you know how to do that. So really, it's a matter of accepting and acknowledging that he is God, that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is, he is God, creator of heaven and earth. And uh, because of our mistakes and our sin and our, our shortfalling and shortcomings, uh, we have been separated from that beautiful, intimate relationship that God desired 
for us to have with him from before the foundation of the world, from before the world was even created. And our sin broke that relationship off. But through the cross and through the work of Jesus Christ, he paid the price for that sin and he actually bridged the gap uh, to where that brokenness happened. And when we put our trust in him and believe that what he did on the cross was sufficient to cover over all of our mistakes, um, and we accept that and then ask him to forgive us of our sin, we are granted eternal life as a free gift. It's not based on anything that we could possibly do. It's a free gift. It's, it's based on everything that he's already done for us. And so if you want to step into that relationship today and, and start today with a clean slate, I want to make sure to pray with you and, and um, help you step into that decision. So let's just pray together. And we're just going to acknowledge our sin, believe that what Jesus did on the cross is sufficient, and then confess that he is Lord and that we want him to be Lord of our lives. So Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the work that you are doing in our hearts right now. We ask that you would wash us clean. Take away our mistakes. We ask that the sin that we've committed today and throughout our whole lives, we ask that you would just forgive it and remove it completely from our lives, from our hearts and from our minds. And we ask that you'd give us a, a, new, a new start today. Jesus, we want you to be Lord of our lives, Lord of our hearts. So we ask that you come into our lives and have relationship with us and show us how to live according to your word and your way. In your name we pray. Amen. So if you prayed that today, we would love to hear about it. Uh, you know, you just have to text us. You can text TSAMEN to 94000 and we'll just text you back. Uh, really, our Christianity is uh, lived out in community and it's, it's not possible to live out your faith independent and isolated. So make sure to let someone know that you made that decision today and, and connect with us in whatever way is most comfortable for you because we would love to help you walk out this, this path with Jesus Christ. And so some of the ways to connect right away into our community um, include like small groups. We will be starting a new small group session in the summer. We're going to launch our new small groups in June. Um, so stay tuned. We're going to take a little bit of a break in, in the next few weeks, but we're getting ready to launch our small groups. So if you are interested in leading a small group and uh, participating in that, please let us know. And um, you can sign up to lead a group. And uh, it's an amazing thing. We have a class. We'll teach you how to do it. We'll give you all the tools you need. And then another way to connect is through Growth Track. Growth Track it is every Sunday, uh, the first four Sundays of the month. Uh, at 11.15 on Zoom. And our growth track just really helps you to discover your purpose and get connected here on the serve team and um, become a member of Sanctuary. So you can um, just text TS Grow to 94000 if you're interested in that. And we'll send you the Zoom link via text and you can just jump right in on the Zoom meeting at 11.15. All right, and then our in-person family gatherings are happening at Baldwin Park every Sunday at 1 p.m. We'd love to see you there. We worship together, we share the word, and we have communion, and there's a playground right nearby so your kids can come on over, and we have some Kingdom Kids uh, teachers there to meet up with your, your kid your, and enjoy a fun time with them. So please join us at the park at 1 p.m. Um, and the plan moving forward is that we are going to actually start hosting our in-person service indoors at the beginning of June, on June 6th. So um, look forward to that. We'll be giving you guys more details, but we will be gathering again indoors for church on June 6th and moving forward into the summer. So um, in the meantime, meet up with us at Baldwin Park at 1 p.m. And uh, the outreach that we're participating in right now is the Walk for Life. So we would love for you to join the team. The Walk for Life is um, all, all about supporting an organization called Options Health. Options Health is a medical clinic here in the Bay Area that provides free healthcare services to women, men, and their families in the areas of pregnancy and sexual health. And we want to raise money to pour into this organization. We, are, um, we have the goal of raising $2,000 sanctuary. 
So if you would like to sign up and join the team, you can walk with us on May 15th. We're going to meet up at Hidden Lakes Park in Martinez, probably around 1130. We'll, we'll confirm the time with you soon. But uh, mark your calendar for May 15th. And then if you'd like to try to get your own sponsors, you can do that to raise money. Or you can just give to the Sanctuary team. And our team is going to be working together to raise that $2,000 to donate to this amazing organization. All right. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining um, this service. And uh, we will see you next week.
heart of gratitude. Just begin to whisper your thanks to him. Taste. 